Hello and welcome to the first ever VOD review video. This is a series where you can submit your videos for review and receive advice from myself as well as the wealth of knowledge in the YouTube comment section on how to reach your goals in a game. Uh, today's submission is going to be coming from Lei, who's been playing seriously for about one year now. Uh, he currently doesn't have a rating but plans to join the BCA. Uh, Lei's goal is to perform well in the BCA and wants to be able to win some local tournaments. Uh, Lei also said that he wants to get some advice on the fundamentals, position play, and getting the right English on the cue ball. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the video. I asked Lay to play some games of nine ball with the ghost. Uh, the only difference here being that if he missed the shot or get way out of position, I just asked him to take ball in hand and keep going until he got out of the rack. All right, so I've watched this video way more times than I care to admit. So I already have a good idea of what I want to talk about throughout this video. Um, one of the things we're going to notice is that you kind of consistently hit a little bit to the left side of the rack. Um, from our perspective, from your perspective, it's going to be the right side of the rack. And that might be why this uh, why this wing ball isn't going into this corner pocket. Um, typically, whenever you're doing this break, you either want to leave the cue ball in the center of the table, or you want to draw it off, off of this rail, and then back out. Anyways, you got ball in hand. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the table here. Uh, what you're going to want to do, uh, what I see is, so this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You got nine balls on the table, so you got a little bit of work ahead of you. But fortunately, most of the balls are pretty close to being in front of the pocket. Uh, the six, you're going to have to play a combo on. <clears throat> the two big problems here are from the three to the four, and then the four to the five. And the only reason they're really problems is because they're on opposite sides of the table. Uh, what I would recommend, uh, you have two options on the four. Uh, you could leave the cue ball about here, which is nice because you can just play a stop shot. You can hit this with a bit of left, send it off here, send it off here, and then try to send it down here. Um, it's a little bit dangerous though. You run risk. Of, you run the risk of running into this eight and nine, or maybe scratching. Um, another good option is to get close to straight in on this two. You can draw it back. And then you can actually cut this three to the right side of this pocket, cheating the corner pocket, coming off here and all the way down for the four. Um, I like getting underneath the four to get to the five. So this is a pretty good option because you get to bounce off this rail and try to kill it off this rail. So this shot should just be stun, a uh, little bit of bottom, just trying to stun it up table. Uh, I would have left yourself probably a little bit more angle, and that would have helped the cue ball get down here. Uh, you really wouldn't, you really don't want to hit that ball any harder. Uh, you should have just left a little bit more angle. It's not that hard of a ball to make, uh, even with the extra angle. And you would have been down here. You would have been ideal. Now you run the risk of running into the six. You got to come down here, bounce off the rail, try to stop it, get good shape on the three, and yeah. Uh, you almost missed it. It kind of... Uh, if you guys, if you look at the, uh, when you pocket it, it kind of bounces off this, this nipple. Um, had you hit it thinner, the ball would have probably hit the six. So you needed a little bit more bottom and you needed to hit it a little bit harder to hold the bottom and to come off this rail. So you would have went one, two, back out. <coughs> From here, shape on the four is extremely difficult. Uh, you have too much angle to try and spin it down to get on this side and you don't have, yeah, you just have too much angle and the only other way I really see for you to get shape is to come off here, try to get between these two and then stop the cue ball off this rail so you can play the combo for the seven. Uh, that's really the only way I see getting shape on the four ball from here. And uh, you hit it, um, even if you hit it here, you probably hit it a little too hard. It would have come off, come back up, and then probably ended up right about here. Uh, if you would have got on this side with the running English that it had, it would have definitely taken off on you. So you hit that shot too hard either way, and you hit a little bit too much right. If you put any right at all, it's hard to tell. Um, one way to shorten that up if you didn't put any right is to just cut the ball a little bit thinner to the left side of the pocket and then you would have had 
you would end up running into here instead of here. Here, the right shot, I like the way, I like where you put the cue ball for ball in hand. You're underneath it, gives you a nice natural angle to run up. Um, I don't like only going off this one rail and stopping to get position, because let's say you come up six inches shorter, now you have to use the bridge, you got a really thin cut, and you have to avoid the nine when you're coming around tables, so you gotta spin it with right, with a bridge. It's, it's really awkward. Um, I would have suggested maybe putting a little bit more right, coming, hit the cue ball here, and then coming off, coming off that rail and coming up. So instead of going one rail, you'd go two rails. Uh, either way, you've got decent position. All you really need to do here, spin it with a little bit of right, come up table, and stop it there. And the reason why you want to kind of stop it in the middle of the table is you want a good angle to get out from here and back out in case that this six ball sits on this rail. Um, if you don't leave enough angle, the six ball is going to sit on this rail and the cue ball is going to be over here. And it looks like you would have had enough angle um, if the table wasn't rolling to the right. But one thing to notice is that you did hit this a little bit too hard and now you're going to have a hard time reaching the cue ball. Um, so you're going to have to use a bridge or you're going to have to really stretch out, maybe use an extension. Uh, one way to avoid this is just, uh, the way that you could have avoided this is to just play the cue ball back here instead of up here. <coughs> so maybe thinking ahead or speed control, um, those are two things that I would say definitely need work. Um, you missed that shot basically because you're stretched out. Um, that wasn't necessarily a myth an aiming or anything like that mistake. That was just a positional error. You shouldn't have left the cue ball up here. You should have left it back here. Uh, here. Mm. So coming in at this angle, the six is going to like kind of stay around here. It's not going to really have enough time. And uh, I don't know. It depends on how thin you cut the six. I kind of like hitting it thick, letting the cue ball die off around here. And then... Yeah. So the six will knock in the seven, barely. Uh, it'll stick around here and the cue ball will stay around here. Looks like you put left spin on that. That's really not what you want to do. And you hit the shot uh, pretty hard. Maybe you're counting on hitting the seven on the right side, from my point of view, which would have put the cube six ball a little bit more in front of the pocket. Um, but I think my way was a lot better. You just hit it soft, and then you're guaranteed shape. You don't have to worry about where you're hitting the seven ball. Here, the only way to really make the ball is to spin it on its right. And yeah, um, don't really expect you to make that unless you know how to do that shot. But um, if you did want to make that shot, what you would do here is you would put a lot of right, maybe a little bit of bottom, so you can get the cue ball a little bit out, and then it corrects itself, it comes down, it hits this rail, goes into the six, and then would knock it in. Yeah, there was a, there's really no way to make that, make that ball with just hitting it top, unless these pockets are really loose. Here, um, I would have played position for the eight in the side pocket, um, because if you get here, you can just kind of uh, roll it forward, take the cut from there. Um, but ideally, you'd get like close to straight in. You go off this rail and just shoot the nine there. Coming this way, you're you're fine. But if you were to come up, you know, a foot shorter, which is really possible if you would have just hit the thick six a little bit thicker. Um, you're flirting with him running into the side pocket. It makes the shot really awkward. <coughs> but uh, you were fine with where you were. All you needed to do was hit top. And you came off this rail. You got a nice shape on the nine. And you're good. All right, so you got out. A um, couple mistakes there. Uh, speed control. Another mistake with uh, thinking ahead. But overall, I think your uh, your shot making is pretty decent.
So we're doing the same break. Um, we'll see the seven once again, kind of get stuck in that corner. But I did like this break a lot more. They kept the cue ball in the center of the table. Uh, the one stopped before it got down to this rail, so you have a nice, easy cut on it. And uh, since we're at the beginning of the rack, let's go ahead and pause and take a look at what you need to do to get out here. Um, so the cut on the one's kind of thin, and the three ball is all the way down here. So... Hmm. This one's kind of tough. I think ideally you would leave the cue ball here and come off this rail, off this rail, and then set up for the three. Uh, the other option is to come up like here, kind of draw the cue ball, hit around here with a bunch of right, and then kind of throw it down with the right and get there. Um, you could also play position on this side and go one, two, you, you really have to go behind the six, but if you go behind the six, then you have to go between the five and nine, which is going to be awkward. Um, so three rails is a possibility, but it's difficult. And so you're in kind of a sticky situation because both the positions you want here to get to the three are not ideal um, because you're going to have to hit this one really slow and you're probably going to have to play it with inside, inside English, which is going to make the shot a lot more difficult. Um, hmm. What else could you do here? You know, you could leave the cue ball like here in the middle of the table and just cut it. It's really not that difficult. So you can hit the one, come up, come off this rail, come up. Uh, maybe leave the cue ball around here. Maybe that's what your goal is, but then you risk kind of running behind the four. I mean, this is a this is a hard out, no doubt, undoubtedly. I guess your best option is uh. Because this cut is so thin. Hmm. I kind of like spinning this in with a little bit of right. Come off this rail, right? Come over here. Leave an inside angle, natural angle to go one, two, three rails, and then just try to get it past the nine. So you hit that a little bit hard. You made this shot quite a bit harder than it needed to be. Um, if you hit it a bit softer, you can leave the cue ball around here, around here. Now you're shooting it from all the way back here. Not sure if you meant to make the bank on purpose. Uh, if you did, bravo. Um, but it's dangerous because of where these balls were, right? Um, there's a good chance you didn't have a shot on the two. And uh, I still think you shoot this ball here and then try to swing it with left and go in between here and try to get down for the three. And yeah, it looks like you couldn't really see the pocket on the uh, two ball uh, because of the five. And so that's why you had to hit it so thick. Uh, one thing you could have done there is spin it with a lot of right. I'm not sure if you would have been able to get enough spin on it to throw it in, but uh, either way, uh, you end up making it, so not bad. Here you just kind of float up, get over here for the four ball. Uh, you want to get here, try to get straight in, and then you can control where you want to get on the five ball. On the five, you have to leave an angle on the six to kind of get over for the eight because you kind of want to be straight in on the eight, as straight in as you can get so you can stop it, play the nine ball over here. So... Try to get close to straight in, draw back a little bit. Maybe get right here, try to leave the cue ball here on the six, hit the six, float over this, float off this rail, back over for the eight, shoot the eight down here. And here we actually see you, despite hitting it too thick, um, you actually over in your position still 
So once again, speed control is going to be an issue um, that you need to work on. Um, I personally like coming off this rail uh, because the rail is going to help you control the cue ball a little bit more. And you're going to have a lot more room to stop the cue ball in between, you know, from somewhere between here and there. Versus if you're going straight up table, you have to try to stop it in between there and there. You really don't want to get on this side of the ball either, because then you're going towards the five, which is dangerous. With this wall of balls here. Um, you make the three, but you end up overrunning your position again. And instead of like, Going towards the four like this, I like keeping it parallel with the four, or parallel with the table, so sending it straight up table instead of like that. Um, the reason for that is uh, if we go back and look, so the cue ball is coming this way, this way, this way, so you have ideal shape from like here to there, and that's it. That's all you got. That's all you got for this entire shot. Um, if you get to here, now all of a sudden it's a super thin cut and you get to here, it's an impossible cut. And now you gotta make like exactly the shot that you're shooting now. Uh, versus if you come off this rail, you have a shot from, I mean, if you really under hit it from here to there, 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 all the way like that. Um, and if you go straight up table, you have a shot from there all the way here and all the way back. Um, off the rails better. Uh, but if you do want to float it up, you want to send it up parallel, not not crossing the line so much. Uh, you end up missing this ball. Um, not a surprise. It's a really hard shot. Um, don't beat yourself up over shots that are very difficult to make. Um, if you miss a shot that's hard to make, Chalk it up to, well, I'm not really supposed to make that shot. Don't feel don't feel too bad about it. It doesn't look like you do. But I used to beat myself up over those shots all the time. Um, here, you're just looking to get the same position that I talked about earlier. Uh, looks like you came up a little bit short. Here, I like just hitting with bottom, drawing straight into the 8, and using the 8 to stop the, stop the cue ball. Um, and then you can send the 8 towards the side pocket to make it a little bit easier. But uh, this was fine what you did. You came out from it, used a little bit of left to get in front of the 8 ball so you don't have to worry about getting behind it. It's just a little bit touch here. My way, you can hit the ball a little bit more firm, a little bit more comfortable. So you had a nice angle. Um, ideally, you kind of wanted to get back out to here, right? Um, so. If you're here, the pocket's a lot easier, and you can just float the cue ball over to make it here. If you're dead straight, you can just stop the cue ball and make the nine ball here. And if you get on this side, you can come off this rail and make the nine ball here. But with this much angle, you either have to come up with a, like a really strong bottom right stroke and try to pull it off and then spin it with right and back out like that and get a shape on the nine. Or you have to play like this really awkward, like over here and then get behind, get to the low side of the nine ball and play it kind of a long shot into the corner or you have to cut it into the side pocket. I really don't like getting underneath the ball here. <coughs> so on that shot, you know, hit it a little bit harder and guarantee that you're going to get shape. Because it doesn't matter if you get here to all the way over here, right? You have this whole room. You're going to get shape on the nine. But shooting like anywhere over here, it's going to be very difficult. And you got, you played it kind of risky, right? Because the cue ball came off here, came off this rail and back over. Um, it was pretty close to scratching, but you didn't scratch. You got shape, 
and you made the long cut on the nine. So it was a nice shot. And now we're going to get into the final rack. I'm um, going to go ahead and skip forward to where you're breaking. Uh, one thing, you know, you could move the cue ball just like maybe like over here instead of over there. And that might help this eight ball go, you know, this wing ball go a little bit more. But I mean, I've seen people break as far out as here, hitting the one ball dead on in the corner and the wing ball still goes. Um, but typically you're not breaking out that far. You're breaking out a little bit more over here. And again, we kind of see the same issue of uh, you came off the rack, cue ball went to the left. Uh, luckily, it kind of hit the one ball though, stopped it, and now you're pretty much straight in. Uh, before the rack gets started, I want to talk about how to get out of this rack in one go. Um, once again, a really nice spread on all the balls. They're all pretty much in front of pockets. There's no real big problem balls here this time. Uh, everything's pretty simple. <clears throat> the only thing you really got to be careful about is getting from the four to the five because the six ball is going to be kind of blocking, you know, that, that stop shot that you have here. Um, but you know, it's pretty simple. You know, you stop it, hit it, you stop, you make the three ball, you stop, make the four ball. You can roll forward a little bit or draw back, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, I think I like coming, I think I like drawing back behind the six. That way, <coughs> sorry. I think I like drawing back behind the six because you can play the uh, the five ball in the side pocket and then come off this rail. And if you come up, you know, over here, you can play it in the side pocket. You come up over here, you can play it in that corner. Uh, yeah. So you do have ball in hand. Uh, you decided not to take it, but you did end up missing it. Um, if you look, your cue kind of pulls to the left a little bit at the end of your stroke. And I think what happened was you put a little bit of unintended left on the cue ball, which threw the one ball a little bit to the right, and that's why you missed on this side. Um, here it's basically the same out. You just need to get a stop shot on the two ball. Um, once again, we kind of see an issue with your draw. You don't want to go forward on that shot. You really want to hit it and kind of draw back a little bit and just get straight in on the two. Um, and I saw you hitting bottom. If you look at it, you're aiming bottom, but you hit it so soft that by the time the cue ball gets to the one ball, it's already lost all that draw. So by here, the cue ball is like lost all of its draw, and by here it's got top English on it, and that's why it went through the four. Here you actually put right on it. You definitely don't want to put right here. Uh, what you wanted to do was hit this with top, kind of bend the angle. So this is kind of like the, uh, that's the, uh, what do they call it? That's the tangent line, right? Kind of cutting it over there. Uh, you hit top, so you bend it off the tangent line, come off this rail, and then straight back out for the three. Because the three didn't go here. Uh, now you have to make this thin cut. And yeah, position on the four is really difficult from where you are here right now. Um, I'd say your best bet is try to like, yeah. I mean, you're just going to have to hit and hope here. There's no real good way to get position. I guess... I guess what you could do is uh, spin it with inside, hit here, try to come off this rail, and then let the inside take you back over here. Or, uh, that's that's like the best thing I can think of to do. You have to hit that ball pretty thin too. Yeah, um, you didn't end up getting a sh get, getting a chance to make this into the side pocket, but you ran into the nine, and so you were pretty lucky to uh, get a shot on the four.
Here you have two options, right? Um, so you can get on this side, make the five in the side pocket coming from over here, or you can go forward off this rail and then back out and then out over here and make the five pull over here. Um, to do that shot, you wanna hit it with top left and to do this shot, you're gonna just have to hit it with straight bottom. The reason why I don't like hitting bottom here is because of the distance between the four and the cue ball and the fact that you're cutting it into the side pocket at a somewhat steep angle. So whenever you're cutting at a steep angle and it's going into this rail, if you hit that ball too hard, especially on tighter pockets, there's a really good chance it's going to wobble or throw it out. Um, so I like hitting this shot with top left and the top will take the cue ball to this rail and then the left will spin it down and get it down so you can uh, get past this six and cut this five ball into this side pocket. And unfortunately you missed. Um, here we're gonna see another problem with your draw shot. You're only a few inches away, you're only a few ball lengths away from uh, making this four, from the four, right? Um, here, you either want to hit top and come on this side again, or hit bottom, and come on this side. Uh, we'll see that you choose to shoot bottom, but it looks like on your last stroke, the cue kind of went up a little bit. Uh, and so basically what happened is you hit center cue ball, cue ball ran straight into the nine, um, if you just hit bottom there, you can hit that and you can actually draw it back out to like right here um, just with a nice, nice stroke. Um, so I don't know if that's an issue with your draw or an issue with you not thinking about shape on the five. Um, here, you're supposed to take ball in hand, but you decide to kick at it. <laughs> uh, if you do want to kick at that shot, since that scratch happens so much, instead of going one rail into it, if you want to kick this way, you can go two rails into it and kick it like that, or you can go two rails this way and kick it like that. Because going one rail, if you hit on this on this side of it, right, you're going to scratch every time. Um, so anyways, you'll take ball in hand. We'll see you opt for this uh, this inside angle, float the cue ball up the table shot again. And once again, we'll see that your trawl that you're trying to get on the cue ball just isn't really taking. And the reason is you're not really, you're not staying low enough on the cue ball. You need to get, you need to aim lower on the cue ball than you are. So ideally, you know, you don't want to be going towards this nine ball. Um, so ideally, you kind of wanted to just get straight, maybe a little bit of angle over here and uh, come down. If you got on this side, you'd be in trouble. So it was, it was good to get on this side of the ball, just not that much. Um, but you managed to avoid the nine, which is really nice. You drew it over here to stop the cue ball, which was nice. Um, here, I like hitting this shot with just a bit of bottom. But as we see, bottom doesn't really seem to be your strong suit. You didn't try to hit it there. You hit center ball and let the top take it off the rail and back over. But uh, if you were good at, if you practice bottom, you could have just hit that, floated it off this rail and back up, or you could have just drawn it straight back um, and shot this in the side pocket, which would have been a lot, you know, a bit easier shot. There's a cat crying outside my room, but you made the nine ball. All right, and that is kind of the end of this VOD review. So I'm gonna be talking about, now that we kind of hit the end, we've got a decent idea of like how you play. Um, so I wanna highlight some of the issues that I saw. Um, so we're gonna start here in the fundamentals, the pre-shot routine. Uh, let, let's go back and look at a couple of examples of uh, shots that were easy to make. Um, not too easy though. So let's look at this eight ball. I think this eight ball is gonna be a great example. 
because it's going to take most of your focus. So you're talking, you're looking at the shot, you see the angle, you get down. Um, one thing you'll see players do is they'll actually look at the angle, then they'll go and they'll stand behind the shot and they'll walk into it. That might not be possible here because you have pretty limited room, um, but you kind of want to step into the shot and so you're not changing your aim. Uh, let's see if you change your aim at all when you get down. So you didn't change your aim, which is good. Um, you're bridging with an open bridge again, which is pretty much all you used. So let's do this. Your pre-shot routine. On that shot in particular, I'm going to say it was pretty decent. Um, you looked at the shot, you looked at the angle, you got down, you didn't change your aim, and then you went into your stroke. Um, bridge. Let's see here. Close bridge. Um, something you really need to practice. It's not necessarily better than an open bridge. Um, if you watch snooker at all, Every player pretty much uses an open bridge all the time, and the reason is because it's easier to aim and it's better accuracy. But the reason why the closed bridge is so popular in pool is because it kind of helps keep your cue under control. So um, unlike snooker and pool, you have to do, especially rotation, you have to do a lot of English on the cue ball, whether it's you know, you're spinning with a ton of bottom, putting a ton of top, trying to get around the table to where you need to be. Uh, Versus snooker, you're hitting a lot of you know center balls and just going with the natural angles of the table that you're left with on the table. And so having that closed bridge, um, whenever you, you can get bottom, you can get top, you can get right, you can get left with an open bridge. But whenever you have to hit it hard, there's going to be a few mistakes in your stroke and that closed bridge is going to kind of keep control of that cue and it's going to minimize some of those small mistakes you might have in your stroke. So I'd say this closed bridge is definitely something to practice. Um, you do use the closed bridge whenever you're bridging off the rail, which is great. Um, you kind of, you know, if this is the rail, you got the cue coming through here, you're doing like that. And overall, though, your bridging was pretty well, pretty done pretty well. I'd say just work on the closed bridge a little bit. Practice with it. Shoot a couple weeks, just the closed bridge. And uh, just get used to using it. Uh, stance. Um, if we go back, we look at your stances. I um, need a good shot. Show me something good. All right, here we go. So here's a good example of your stance. Let me take a look at your pre-stroke again. Yeah. The stance is pretty wide, about a shoulder width apart. It looks like you're, you know, your right foot, since you're right-handed, is under here, which is ideal. Stance was, let's just say, your stance is fine. We'll say that. Pre-shot routine, decent, but you should step into the shot. And let's just make sure you're not actually doing that and you weren't actually, you were just limited. Yeah, so it looks like you're just getting straight down. Um, I'd say stand back a little bit and then step into the shot. Yeah. Your grip. Uh, this is another great example of grip right here. So we'll go ahead and look at this. It looks a little bit tight. Um, most of the weight of the cue should be resting on your second finger and first finger. Um, the second finger should bear the mo most weight of the cue. The first finger should bear the second most weight of the cue. And your two back fingers should just be floating pretty loosely and free. Uh, the only time you really want to tighten up on that is if you're shooting like a harder shot and you're kind of 
jacked up. I don't know. At a shot like this, you don't need to be holding the cue that tight. So I'm going to say uh, loosen, loosen up your back two fingers. Stroke. Um, here, this is something that I've noticed. Well, so you'll get down, one full stroke, one full stroke, and then you shoot. One full stroke, then you shoot. Um, it's like full stroke, full stroke, full stroke, shoot. Sometimes you just do one full stroke, and then you shoot. Other times you do two full strokes, and then you shoot. Um, <coughs> another thing is you accelerate back backwards. Let's look at the one ball again. You accelerate backwards a lot faster than you go forwards. Um, so you'll kind of move the cue back real fast, and then you'll ease into the shot. Move back real fast and ease into the shot. And if you watch uh, professional players, uh, give me a second and I'm going to pull up, let's say, uh, Shane Van Boning. So let's pull up this shot. Yeah, we get to watch an ad. Um, there's Carlo Viado. Carlo Viado. See if we can get a good shot of Shane shooting. It's Carlo shooting. Not that Carlo is not a good example, but. All right, unfortunately, Shane's shooting at a ball that he can't make. Okay, that's Carlo again. Goodness, Carlo shot a lot this match. Shane must be losing, right? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, Carlo's still shooting. Okay, Shane's got a shot. This is actually ideal, right? Because we have him shooting basically at the same angle that you were shooting that one ball. So two full strokes, and then you'll see what he does next. These little miniature strokes right before the last one. So he does like a little quarter stroke, then he does a little eighth stroke, and then you'll see a pause right here. So let's go ahead and start back up. And like I said, see how Shane is stepping into the shot? He steps into the shot. He's already lined up. His aim is perfect. And now it's going to want a couple full strokes, a couple small strokes, and then go forward and shoot the shot. And now we're going to get another example. One full stroke. Oh, he didn't really do it that time. Bad example. <laughs> um, full stroke, and then he went for it. Hey, these shots are so easy for Shane, though. Full stroke. Small stroke. There it was again. Okay. Full stroke. Little small stroke. A pause. And then he shoots the shot. Couple small strokes. A pause. And then he shoots the shot. Full stroke, a small stroke, a pause, and then he shoots the shot. So while it might not be the same every single time, you're going to see this from a lot of high level players. They'll get down onto a shot and they'll do maybe a full stroke. Sometimes they won't, but you'll see a couple small strokes getting closer and closer to the cue ball. They'll stop and then they'll shoot all the way through. So, so what are they doing here? Um, 
the full strokes you'll see even before they get down they're doing kind of full full practice strokes and they're getting an idea feel for the speed that they want to hit the ball at they want to hit the ball at this speed okay and then they already know the english that they want but they want to make sure they hit precisely where they want to hit so you might see them do a full stroke but then you'll see a slight pause and then small strokes and what they're doing when they these strokes get smaller and smaller and smaller they're dialing in exactly where they want to hit the cue ball and it's like let's say you want to hit a full tip under center so they'll get down they're dialing it in dialing it in dialing it in and then they pause and the purpose of this pause is are they hitting the exact english that they want is the shot aimed up right are they going to hit yeah they're making sure everything is perfect if the shot's not perfect you'll see them stand up um or you should stand up and anyways so dialing in the english dialing in the english English is dialed in. The shot is lined up perfectly. I'm not going to miss. I'm going to get the cue ball where I want it to go. Go, with, go on with the shot. Um, that's something you should do. Additionally, um, we go back a little bit. Oh goodness, I lost the spot. Um, watch the transition from the back swing in Shane to the forward swing. It's, it's a lot smoother than yours. Yours is kind of back real fast and then go kind of like ease into it. Shane is... Go to this six ball. It's a nice smooth acceleration. Whew. Versus... Or... Nice and smooth acceleration versus kind of jerky movements. So I'd say try to get that smooth acceleration built into your into your stroke, and not be so jerky in your backswing. Anyways, thanks for the example, Shane. Uh, all right. So the stroke. Um, let's see here. Smoothing out back swing and forward swing transition and then the other bit of advice that I would have <coughs> is uh, you know take smaller strokes and then a pause to dial everything in. And you'll be surprised what that does with your game. Uh, execution wise, I see you kind of changing your, uh, your aim a little bit towards the end of the shot. So what I would recommend is bridging a little bit closer to the cue ball. So Or not bridging. Q should be closer to the cue ball. You know, within two centimeters. Yeah. And what that'll do is it'll help you ensure that you're hitting where you're looking on the cue ball. And then obviously you just need to practice and make sure that your aim's not changing. And one of the things you can do that is just hitting straight shots. Hit straight shots and make sure you're not getting any unintended left, unintended right, unintended top, too much bottom, and just hit dead straight shots, full table, you know, set up an object ball in the middle of the table, dead center, set up the cue ball, at one diamond here, two diamonds out. So you're setting up a perfectly straight line and then just hit the ball slightly under, slightly under the center cue ball, dead, dead center, and just try to stop the cue ball. 
make sure there's no left, make sure there's no unintended right, and make sure you're not drawing it back, make sure you're not following it, and just keep doing that until you get it until you get it perfect. Um, pocketing. I didn't see you use a ton of left and right, um, so I'd say practice making balls with lots of left and right. Um, the purpose of this is just just get used to using it. You're gonna have to, as you go up um, in skill level, it's something you're gonna have to start doing a lot more. So you might as well start using it now and you're gonna see a really quick improvement in your game uh, whenever you're able to use left and right. Uh, top and bottom, I'd say definitely need to practice bottom stop and draw um, we saw a lot of problems with this where you try to stop the cue ball but it would go forward a little bit too much um, you would try to draw the cue ball and it lose its draw before it got to the object ball um, it's just something you need to practice uh, yeah that's pretty much it I'll link a video of I don't know if you watch the channel Sharavari, Sharavari, uh, one of the better YouTube, one of the well, one of the best YouTube instructional billiards channels. Um, I'll leave a couple of his videos in the description for you to check out, and one of them is talking about drawing the cue ball. Um, another good option is Dr. Dave Tor Lowry. There's tons of people on YouTube, um, but yeah, I'll leave some links in the description for you to check out for center ball. Um, this is what you use most of the time. I don't think you need practice on center ball. I'm going to say good. Uh, position play, thinking ahead, uh, needs a lot of work. Um, you kind of have trouble identifying the angles. You need to start using the rails more often. So using rails to stop the cue ball and to guide the cue ball exactly where you need it to go. Uh, instead of just trying to float the cue ball off of you know a small amount of angle, trying to float it into the middle of the table, go off of the rail and into the center of the table. It's a lot easier to control. Um, spin. <coughs> I kind of already covered this. Um, so just look at above. You don't really use spin that much, so it's kind of hard. Speed control, uh, definitely. Need to work on that. Um, we've seen you saw you overrun a lot of pretty simple position shots uh, because you hit it way too hard, and I think a lot of that is because you're trying to float the cue ball versus just go off the rail. Um, the best way to get out is it rational. Um, I don't think we really got to see and reference that, so. I'm just going to say not applicable because you're you're kind of having a hard time getting the cue ball to where it even really needs to be to begin with. So it's kind of hard to see the way you're looking at the entire rack. Um, but as you develop your skills, you're going to need to see the entire rack the way I did at the beginning of every rack. Uh, and one way to do this is to watch professional play. <clears throat> so just go on YouTube, Google your favorite players, that you want to emulate and try to guess how they're going to play position, how they're going to get to their next ball. Uh, pause it at the beginning of the rack. Try to plan everything out. You know, if it's a if it's a simple out where they're not going to have to play defense and they should be able to get out. Try to think ahead the entire rack and notice. You know, you'll notice that they make some small positional errors, but it's never a huge error. I mean, sometimes it is, but uh, for the most part, it isn't. And just see how your mind works compared to theirs. And that's really where I learned most of my positional play, is just watching professionals. Uh, the break, the cue ball control, um, don't hit on the, uh, from our side, from on the opposite side of where you are breaking. So if you're breaking from the So if you're breaking from the this side over here, 
the cue ball should not be traveling over here. It should either be stopped in the center of the table or it should come off here and back out. And then one ball control, I think that's a bit above your level so far right now. So I'm going to say not applicable. And then making a ball on the break. Um, I think this, using a magic rack, you didn't make the balls, but I think that could just be because of hitting on the wrong side of the rack, or it could also be... <coughs> Sorry about this. <coughs> so as far as making a ball on the break, I think a lot of this has to do with you hitting on, one, the wrong side of the rack, and then also you're playing at home on a table that kind of leans. Uh, it's not the best table, probably not the best equipment, so... I don't expect balls to be made every time. Um, so I'm going to say uh, not really applicable right now. And then a legal break. Uh, I think there were a couple breaks that you had where you didn't get a couple balls past the head string. Or it was really just the one. Yeah, I don't know. Break needs work. But the first thing you really need to work on is the fundamentals uh, and then using left and right and draw and uh, i'm gonna link i'm gonna link videos in the description of this for you to look at and review and yeah that's gonna be the end of this video uh for everybody else who's just watching this video please leave comments in the comment section um there's a lot of stuff that i'm sure i missed uh there might be a few things that i got wrong please leave a comment uh with your opinions give lay your advice um, there's a lot of very knowledgeable players out here that watch the channel, so give your advice to Lay. Tell him what you think he needs to do to get to the next level. And uh, if you're interested, you can submit your video at my website, worldofpoolandbilliards.com slash VOD review, VOD dash review. And uh, I'll leave a link to that as well in the description. That's it. See you next time.